Hey groups, good to see you guys all again in this new year. Um, I am so excited for this new year, especially where we're going to be heading with content in our messages and with our group's content. I think it'll be super rich um, for you guys to be able to really go through the Bible throughout this uh, next year. Um, but this past weekend, um, I got the opportunity to preach on the opening part of the Bible, Genesis 1 through Genesis 5. And we learned through that that um, in the Garden of Eden, the garden was created perfect. And man and woman were created in God's image. In the image of God, they were created. Um, and there was right relationship with God in the very beginning. Um, and then sin entered the world. Right? We see the serpent, who is Satan in disguise, uh, really trick Eve into eating an apple and convinced her that maybe she shouldn't trust God. Um, we talked about this issue of trust um, in our lives and question, do we, do we trust God with the things that we have? And throughout this series, we're going to be looking uh, much closer at this idea of trust and where it comes up throughout Genesis. Um, but today, I want to focus a little bit closer in on sin. Um, so kids, if you are in the room and you want to go over some kids' questions, I'll have your leaders jump on the page uh, that they can either grab at church or it's online as well that you can print off. But leaders, why don't you go ahead and walk the kids through the kids' questions, and then adults, stay tuned. We'll jump right into your content. All right, groups, question number one. I want you to start by reading Genesis 1, 27. And I'll quick read that here in a minute. It says, so God created mankind in his image, in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And the question is this from that. Um, what does it mean to be made in the image of God? All right, question number two says, read Genesis 2, 1 through 3. It says, thus the heavens, and this is right after creation is done, thus the heavens and earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. And the questions uh, from those verses I want you to think about is, why did God need to take a break? Why did he, right? And why do you think it's important to set a day aside to make it holy? And then is a day of rest something that you have in your life? Why or why not? Question number three, what would need to happen in your life to make a Sabbath and to take a Sabbath? Is it important enough for you to make those things happen? Question number four. Um, I want you to take a minute and read through Genesis 3. Um, it is a full chapter, but it's rich in story there. So I think you'll be able to buzz right through it. Read Genesis 3, and then we'll have some follow-up questions after that. Here's the questions for you. First one is this. What is sin? What are the effects of sin? And what does that mean for our life today? How does that still impact our life today? All right, in Genesis 3, there's a specific verse that we're going to focus in on for this next one. Genesis 3, verse 6. Um, we see in this that there are a few ways that temptation works into our lives. Often food, right? Uh, things that are pleasing to the eye and things that are desirable for gaining wisdom. Here's the question. Which one of these temptations does the devil try to get 
into your life with? And what are the ways that you can combat those things? All right, the challenge for this week, groups, um, is uh, what we heard in the message, actually. It's one of three options for this next year. We're in the time, it, it's a brand new year, right? We're looking at New Year's resolutions, and I want you to pick something up that I don't want you to let down over the next year. So the challenge for this week is to commit to one of these three options. Uh, again, we believe in transformation at the Foundry, um, and the ways we do that are taking one step forward to be more and more like Jesus Christ. So if you're, if you're new to the church, if you're new to the faith, faith, um, that piece of transformation, that first step of transformation could be coming to work or coming to church every, every Sunday. Be here, be in church with the community of believers. If you're doing that already, the second thing would be to grab devotions. If, if you're coming here, that next step of transformation would be being in the Word of God by being in our devotions every day for just a few minutes. Um, and if you're already doing those things, uh, we created that marathon, marathon Bible reading plan, where we're going to be going through the whole book of the or the whole the whole book, uh, the whole Bible as a church. Um, so grab that marathon bookmark and go through it with us. Be in the Word of God. It'll take quite a bit longer because there's chapters that you'll go through every single day. Um, but I think it is going to be so worth your time to be in the Word of God. So um, commit to one of those things. And then once you commit to one of those things, have somebody hold you accountable. Uh, because there is way more power in being able to do something like this if you have somebody checking in to make sure you guys can do it together. If you guys have extra time, uh, we are going to be looking in, digging deeper at the story of Cain and Abel. It's not the story we were able to get to in the message or during group. So I'd love it if you spent some time in, in our digging deeper sections because it really takes that next step in sin and the effects that sin has in our lives and how quickly sin is becoming a big deal in the world, in creation at the very beginning of time. So take a look at that if you got time. Otherwise, I will see you guys next week.